Hello again and welcome to this chemistry lesson about which I am quite excited because it used to be a topic that really intimidated me but uh, I understand it so much better now and I hope I can do the same for you. That is the formulas and the charge of polyatomic ions. What? Okay, that might be your response. Okay, you know what an ion is. Um, you know an ion is a charged particle. Uh, so, for example, if we had sodium, you know that sodium had one valence electron. You would desperately like to get rid of that valence electron, leaving him with an excess of el um, protons and therefore giving him a positive charge. That is a charged particle. It's all about what it happens to the electrons um, uh, whether they are given away or whether they are received. If we give away electrons, we have a positive charge. If we receive electrons, we have a negative charge. Okay, so the formulas in the charge of polyatomic ions, um, uh, poly now means many. Okay, poly means many, and atomic means atoms so many atom ions now this is a single atom ion it's not a many so this is the opposite of poly that's a monoatomic ion mono meaning one okay so um, let me give you an example of a polyatomic ion uh, that is something like sulfate this is sulfate it has a two negative charge and this really intimidated me because there's so much to remember. You have to remember uh, the name sulfate. You have to remember how many oxygens the sulfate has. You have to remember the charge it has. There's, there were so many things. And it's, that's not the only thing. You get sulfate, nitrate, uh, chlorate. Um, you, you get so many of them. And all of them are slightly different. Okay, so let me show you a very easy way on how to find these charges and uh, how to name them. Okay, it is going to be called the T41 or T43 system. Okay, and that's kind of all you have to remember that and uh, a few small things. Okay, we are only going to work with these elements. And those are only the only ones that you're really going to encounter in um, polyatomic ions anyway are these and this is all of the uh, non metal that's it that's the word I was fishing for the non metal elements okay and uh, here is what I'm also just going to eliminate we are not going to use these all of the polyatomic ions will have an oxygen okay so we already know that oxygen is going to be part of it and oxygen is going to interact with all of these elements in a way to produce a polyatomic ion okay and so here is the T here is the T that I'm bragging about okay there's the T of T41 here is the 4, here is the 4 of T41, and here is the 1. Okay, what shall we make it? Red. Okay, here is the 1 of T41. I suggest to rather use a 3, so to rather use 3 instead of a 1, but a 3 doesn't fit nicely on the picture, or, but you can just count them and probably remember that anyways. Okay, now why is it called T41 and how on earth does this make it any simpler? Well, let me show you. Okay, I just told you that all of them will have an oxygen. So, for example, we see here S, okay, we see S there, and we see that S, um, that sulfate had four oxygens okay sulfate had four oxygens so this one oxygen four and sulfate forms part of the four okay and I'm, I'll show you just now how we will get the charges okay so I'm going to just redraw all of these a BCN so we've got boron um, carbon Sulfur, uh, sorry, nitrogen, not sulfur, boron, nitrogen, and then that makes it T is silicon. Okay, 
Now this makes up the T. Each one of them is going to get an oxygen and each one of them is going to get three oxygens. So not just an oxygen but three oxygens and that is what the T stands for. The T stands for three oxygens. Okay, the next um, is the four and the four is going to represent e each of these elements reacting with four or um, compounding with four oxygens okay and don't worry too much about arsenic and uh, uh, selenium and terillium they're not going to be uh, part of the process a lot to be very seldom use that but I'll use it for the illustration okay so we've got the four is made up of uh, sulfur phosphorus okay oh other way around phosphorus and sulfur phosphorus phosphorus and sulfur then arsenic selenium arsenic selenium and terillium selenium and terillium there we go as i just mentioned each one of them will also get an oxygen as a matter of fact, each one of them will get four oxygens because it is in the four. Okay, they're in the four. And then we get the next three which are um, in line with the four. Okay, they are chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Chlorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Okay, each one of them also gets oxygen and the reason why I said it's maybe better to call it T43 is because each one of them gets 43 uh, sorry <laughs> not 43 three oxygens okay now the charge and these are all um, all the eight the eight ions okay and so how would we name them well this is boron and it will become borate so this will become borate okay so we don't say the oxygen at all the oxygen is in the eight okay this is carbon so this becomes carbonate okay this is nitrogen so this becomes nitrate this is silicone so it becomes silicate okay silicate and silicusin this is phosphorus so it becomes phosphate sometimes with a p sometimes with the f i never know this is sulfate okay this is chlorate this is um arsenate This is, no, I'm not even going to mention these ones. I don't want to confuse you, but this is cellate. We might do it. Bromate. Tellate. And. Iodate iodine iodate okay and there we go there we have the names all we know now all we need now is to get the charges now the easiest way to get the charge is is probably just to remember what this first one's charge is if you remember this one charge or even this middle one I'm a, a, I don't know I just use this so much that I know that this is a two negative charge and it's probably a good one to remember anyway you use it so often to remember this is a two negative charge but you could also just remember that uh, this first one has a three negative charge okay three negative charge now what if you forgot okay what would you have done if you couldn't remember anyone and how would you go and work out what this one's charge is now I'm just quickly going to show you how would you have found the charge anyway if you didn't know the system how would you have had to go and find the charge well let me show you 
Okay, let's try uh, uh, boron for example. Boron is in the third in the third uh, column, which means that boron has three valence electrons. Three valence electrons is much easier to lose than to gain another five. So boron would like to just share out his valence electrons. So what boron would do, okay, is he has his, his three valence electrons here, and he's going to share them out, and he's sharing each one of these valence electrons with oxygen. Now oxygen already has six, okay, and it's got three oxygens you can see here. Okay, it's sharing it with three oxygens. Okay, so there's the three oxygens. But you will notice that that the oxygens um, would they don't have their um, uh, orbitals full yet. Okay, orbitals go to two I mean, electrons, and these ones that boron was sharing, they still need another electron. So at this stage, the number of protons and electrons are equal. Okay, even though he's given away um, his extra electron there, that gives this one a negative charge. This one is given his here's one here, yeah, this one has a negative charge, this one has a negative charge, but since boron has given away his electrons, it has a three positive charge. So the the average, or not the average charge, the net charge on this, um, on this substance is still zero. So if, he, because they cancel, uh, the three negatives cancel with three positives. So if we can fill out all of our um, uh, orbitals, which means we need another electron here and another electron there, then all of a sudden we have a, oh sorry, and another electron there, we have three extra electrons giving this whole thing a three negative charge. It's got a surplus of three electrons giving it a three negative charge, meaning that it will, um, um, Yes, well, let's leave it there. That's a three negative charge. That's all you need to know. So once I know this is a three negative charge, okay, the moment I go to a new column, so the moment I go to this column, notice that carbon has one extra electron than boron has. So when it comes to carbon, we won't need to borrow three electrons, we will only need to borrow one extra electron. Okay, does that make sense? Remember carbon will have, in the case of carbon, if I just delete this, if this was carbon, carbon would have had, carbon would have four valence electrons. So now we would only need to borrow two to fill out all of our um, energy levels. So carbon only needs to borrow two electrons and therefore have a surplus of two electrons. And I want to use blue. And therefore carbon will have a two negative charge. Okay, the same with nitrogen. Nitrogen is in the next column and all of them have the same number of oxygens. So uh, nitrogen has again seven valence electrons so he will only need to borrow one so this one will have a one negative charge. Okay now carbon and silicon has the same number of um, valence electrons the same number of oxygens which means they should have the same charge. Okay, now here we can run into into a next problem. Now you could just remember that this one again will have a three negative charge. Okay, you can just remember that. But if you do forget, you can do the same thing. Well, phosphorus, phosphorus is in group. Let's go have a look. Phosphorus is in group up a bit, group five, meaning he's got five valence electrons. So one, two, three, four, five, which if I bond with with oxygen, remember each one of the oxygens will have two, 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 two,
to they'll bring their six valence electrons to the party okay and you can see it's only this one that has everything satisfied all of these guys are going to have to get electrons elsewhere so when it borrows an electron for each one of those positions will have a three negative charge for um, for phosphate okay and then again our um, arsenate has the same thing it's in the same column it's got the same as phosphorus and it's got the same number of oxygens than phosphorus phosphorus and therefore it has a two um, a three negative charge now you can also just have noticed it here notice that uh, nit nitrogen and phosphorus has the same number of valence electrons and here we've got a one negative charge and here we've got an extra oxygen now the moment I add an extra oxygen that extra oxygen needs two more electrons okay and we don't phosphorus don't have extra ele more electrons than um, uh, nitrate nitrogen and so instead of having just a one negative charge the extra hungry um, oxygen makes it an, two more negative okay um, in in this case we've got the same number of oxygen so the same number of valence electrons so we would have the same charge okay if we go up one level in other words we can now go to sulfate um, tellurium and tellurium we f we again see that they have one extra valence electron feeding uh, the the hunger for the electrons and so we don't have to borrow extra electrons we only have to borrow two extra electrons I mean and so we've got a surplus of two electrons in each one of these since they have the same number of valence electrons the same number of oxygens okay now how about this last one the chlorate okay and um, you would think you might now go and subtract two more and say this is a four negative and uh, uh, sorry not subtract two more um, but you could let's see you could do that you could because this one has two less no let's not do it like that or well you you could do it like that let me explain what I'm thinking out loud about okay um, since we have going from here to there we have one less oxygen which means there's one less oxygen asking for two electrons and um, um, and here I needed two electrons so if I have one less oxygen I would have a zero okay charge but I'm also in the next column which means I already have an extra um, electron because I've got an extra valence electron when I move to the next column which means I again have a one negative charge okay so this one will have a one negative charge one negative one negative we can just write a negative it's not necessary for the one so I just want to show you that that each time we start um, we start our new one we start with three negative two negative one negative then uh, these two must be the same so two negative then when I start the new one it's four negative two negative one negative three negative two negative one negative two negative one negative okay so hopefully this is now a summary okay and uh, I know it took me like 20 minutes to explain all this because I didn't just want to give you the system working out the system wouldn't take you longer than a few minutes uh, to do so um, I didn't just want to give you the system I also wanted to show you that the system works and there's a reason why it works so um, if ever you forget the system you can just use the uh, the diagrams to kind of find it so um, I hope this was useful this is not it okay there is more to come because now we could have something like in oh, oh well let's go for SO3 could have something like SO3 okay what is this one called okay what is its charge how will I go find it uh, work it out and find it well in the next video I will look at the proper naming of the other polyatomic ions this was just the foundation the basics and so hopefully I didn't scare you and I'm going to see you in the next video good luck